In this multi-part video training series called Tire Flight Plans, we explain your role in prepping aircraft tires for safe takeoffs and landings. One part looks at tire construction, explains the information on a sidewall, and demonstrates proper tire mounting and inflation procedures. In this program, we'll explain the effects of centrifugal force, heat, and inflation on aircraft tires. We'll show you how to check and adjust inflation on in-service tires, how to inspect tires for wear and damage, and how to demount tires. Like race car tires, aircraft tires are designed to travel at high speeds, but they support heavy loads like huge off-road tires. Because their operating range is so extreme, any deviation from proper care and maintenance procedures can have severe adverse effects. High deflections and high speed contribute to strong centrifugal forces on a tire. Centrifugal force can form traction wave and damage a tire. It's natural for a pneumatic tire to flex both linearly and radially when it contacts the ground. As the tire turns and the area that is contacting the runway tries to return to its normal shape, inertia and centrifugal force cause it to distort and form a traction wave. Tires are designed to deflect at specified inflation and load levels. But when overloaded or underinflated, the traction wave becomes more pronounced, causing oscillations that are damaging. Over-deflection causes high bending stresses and strains in the tire's sidewall construction, resulting in flex cracks in the liner. These cracks allow inflation pressure to escape, compounding the over-deflection problem. Fatigue deterioration also can work its way through a tire sidewall, causing a sidewall blowout. As damaging as a traction wave can be, the heat caused by the increased flexing is even more damaging. The bead area of an underinflated tire can become 50% hotter than that of a properly inflated tire. Heat is damaging to tire rubber compounds and fabric, and it contributes to tread and carcass separations and bead failure. Though tires naturally deteriorate with use, improper inflation speeds the process. Underinflation causes a traction wave and heat buildup, and overinflation accelerates center tread wear, reduces traction, and makes a tire more susceptible to cutting and foreign object damage. Because of these severe conditions, systematic tire inspections are essential to your safe tire flight plans. Goodyear recommends that you check inflation pressures daily when tires are cool. Use a dial or digital gauge with a range of 0 to 300 PSI in increments of 5 PSI. Calibrate the gauge regularly. Tires should be inflated to accommodate the greatest loads and the worst conditions and should be adjusted for ambient temperature extremes. 5 degrees Fahrenheit or 3 degrees Celsius will cause about a 1% change in tire inflation levels. If you are inflating a tire in a 60 degree tire fitting shop and the outside temperature is zero Fahrenheit, you can expect the inflation level to drop 12% when the tire is exposed to the cold. When tires are inflated under load, the appropriate pressure should be adjusted 4% upward. Dual tires present some special circumstances. First, you must keep dual tires inflated to equal pressures. Second, remember that improper inflation in either tire affects both tires. An aircraft tire at zero pressure looks identical to one at proper pressure. Don't take a chance. Check the tire every day. Follow these guidelines when you check dual tire service pressures. If the tire is inflated between 100 and 105 percent of service pressure, no action is needed. If the tire is inflated to 95% of its requirement, add nitrogen to bring it up to the specified service pressure. 
If you find a tire that is between 90 and 95% inflated, inspect the tire and wheel assembly for the cause of the pressure loss, reinflate the tire, and record your findings in the aircraft logbook. Remove the tire if the pressure loss is greater than 5% and reoccurs within 24 hours. If the tire is 80 to 90% inflated, change the tire. And if it is under 80%, remove the tire and wheel assembly and the adjacent tire and wheel assembly. If one tire has been run under inflated, its mate had to carry excess load and an overloaded mate tire will suffer more damage than the underinflated tire. In addition to checking air pressure, examine the tread wear pattern and measure the remaining tread depth. Normal tread wear indicates that a tire has been properly maintained and operated at correct inflation pressures. Center tread wear indicates overinflated tires and excessive tread shoulder wear is from chronic underinflation. Change the tire if the tread has worn to the fabric, if it has worn below the minimum specified tread depth, or if the tread has worn to the base of any groove at any spot. While inspecting the tire, you may find foreign object damage and tread cuts. Replace a tire if a cut extends more than half the width of a rib and deeper than half the remaining tread depth, and if any cut is into the casing plot. A tread cut may lead to a peeled rib. Replace any tire if a portion of a rib is peeled off. Tread chunking is a pockmarked condition in the wearing portion of the tread caused by rough or unimproved runways. If the fabric is visible, replace the tire. Tread separation looks like a large blister on a tire tread. It's caused by a loss of adhesion between the tire's components, usually from excessive loads or flex heating from underinflation. Replace tires with tread separation. Groove cracking and rib undercutting are crack conditions at the base of a tread groove that go around a tire circumference. Like tread separation, these conditions can be caused by excessive loads and underinflation. If the fabric is visible in a groove crack, replace the tire. Also replace the tire if the crack extends under a tread rib, which is called rib undercutting. Chevron cutting is damaged caused by running and breaking on cross-grooved runways. If chunking to the fabric occurs, or if a tread cut exceeds removal criteria, replace the tire. Skid burn appears as an oval-shaped flat spot in the tread. Replace the tire if the fabric is exposed or if balance is affected. Tread rubber reversion is an oval-shaped area that appears similar to a skid. It may result when a tire hydroplanes during landing and it looks like burned rubber on the tread. If the tire balance is affected, replace the tire. Some tires are retreaded with a fabric cord placed into the tread rubber to help prevent chevron cutting on severe runway surfaces. As the tire wears, these cords can become visible but do not warrant tire removal. Age, improper storage, and prolonged exposure to weather can cause tire damage appearing as a random pattern of shallow sidewall cracks. If fabric is visible in the cracks, replace the tire. If your tire inspection uncovers damage that requires tire replacement, follow these safety guidelines for tire removal. When damage exists or is suspected, always approach the tire from the front or rear, never from the side, so that you are facing the assembly. If wheel or tire damage does exist, the tire should be deflated by a remote means. And if this isn't possible, it should be allowed to cool for at least three hours before the tire is deflated. To remove the assembly, deflate the tire using a deflation tool to remove the valve core. It's good practice to deflate the tire before removing the axle nut. Then remove the wheel and tire assembly from the aircraft. Practically all aircraft wheels used today are split wheels, 
which makes mounting and demounting tires easier. Take care when freeing tire beads from wheel flanges to avoid damaging the wheel flange. Large tires require a hydraulic or mechanical bead breaking press. During assembly, aligning the red dot balance mark on a tire with the yellow stripe on inner tubes or the red dot with the valve or heavy spot on a wheel is an important step toward a well-balanced assembly. After mounting and inflating new tires following the guidelines in this program, balance the tire and wheel assemblies. Goodyear recommends that all wheel and tire assemblies be balanced using an aircraft tire balancer. Vibration and shimmy are major complaints that can be caused by improperly balanced tires. In many cases, tires are not the cause. Other causes could be worn bushings or poor gear alignment. Tire flat spots due to skidding and braking can cause vibration, as can flat spots due to a cold operating environment. Out of balance wheel halves also can cause vibration. Some split wheel halves have light spots indicated with an L stamped on the flange. When assembling these wheels, the L on each half should be positioned 180 degrees apart. Worn or loose gear components, poor gear alignment, or a bent wheel also can cause shimmy and vibration, as can mismatched duels. The minimum tire diameter after allowing for a 12-hour stretch period on new tires can be found in Goodyear's Aircraft Tire Data Book. The maximum grown diameter can be calculated using the Tire and Rim Association, or ETRTO formulas, which can be found in Goodyear's book. Aircraft tires undergo some of the highest loads, speeds, and temperatures of any type of tire made, usually far exceeding the forces on car, truck, off-highway, and race tires. Cold weather also can have adverse effects on tires. Tires mounted on parked aircraft exposed to an extreme temperature drop for more than one hour can develop a temporary casing flat spot. This condition usually disappears by the end of the taxi run. Also, cold weather will cause inflation pressure drops, so check tires exposed to these conditions and adjust pressure accordingly. Remember, tire pressures will drop 1% for every 5 degree fall in temperatures. For optimum performance and safety, it is important to follow recommended care and maintenance practices. Check tire pressure daily when the tires are cool. Use only dry nitrogen gas to inflate tires using a supply line that does not exceed the tire's pressure rating by more than 50%. Inflate tires for the worst conditions they will experience, accounting for load and extreme temperatures. When adjusting tire pressure under load, increase standard inflation pressure by 4%. Remember that ambient temperatures affect tire pressure. Every 5 degree Fahrenheit temperature change will result in a parallel 1% pressure change. Never reduce the pressure of a hot tire, especially on a multiple tire gear. Inflate duels to equal pressure. You cannot look at duels and determine if the tires are properly inflated or if a tire is low and below the recommended removal criteria. Always check tire pressure with an accurate calibrated gauge. This concludes this part of Goodyear's Tire Flight Plans, a video training program produced to help you understand the proper care and maintenance of tires. Much of the information provided in this program also is in the Goodyear Aircraft Tire Care and Maintenance Book. Another program in this multi-part series will provide you with a greater understanding of how aircraft tires are made tested, qualified, inspected, retreaded, and used around the world. In its entirety, tire flight plans will tell you what you need to know about safe practices for aircraft tire maintenance and how to achieve maximum service life. <laughs>